Welcome back guys, this is the King of Weebze and this is What If Naruto Was a Neglected Prodigy and uh, it's a story that I've been writing for a while, for a few, about 4 months now and uh, it's taken quite a long time in fact, uh, it started, started once, uh, oh, 4 months now, started in January 1st, now it's nearly April, one day off of April, but anyways, this is only like 2 thirds of the story that I've written out but I don't want to make the video too long and too boring and uh, it's not me reading it out right now um, I will read it out as soon as I finish it but I just wanted to get something out as soon as possible especially because it's been so long since I've uploaded and anyways hope you all enjoy it please take it safe and uh, enjoy the video in the heart of Kanoha Naruto Uzumaki's existence was a tapestry of torment woven with threads of hatred the villager's irrational disdain for the nine-tailed fox sealed within him manifested in relentless abuse and a torrent of mistreatment. Each day was a brutal odyssey through physical beatings and venomous taunts that carved wounds deeper than any mere flesh could endure. Monster. Demon child they would jeer, their eyes gleaming with a malevolent delight that fueled Naruto's isolation. Returning to his supposed sanctuary, Naruto encountered no refuge within the walls of his family home. His family, a quartet that was meant to provide solace, only deepened his anguish. Menma and Mito, his twin siblings, personified cruelty as they took every opportunity to amplify his suffering. You're not wanted here, demon boy. Menma's voice dripped with disdain, a sinister glint flickering in his eyes. Mito, with a malicious grin, added, Mum and Dad don't care about you, Naruto. You're nothing to us. The evenings were the darkest, like the shadows that cloaked Naruto's spirit. As he stumbled home with torn clothes and bruised limbs, his mother's indifferent voice cut through the desolation. Naruto, do not bother us with your presence. We have more important matters to attend to. His father, a stoic figure with eyes that betrayed no warmth, cast a fleeting glance in Naruto's direction before turning away. These words, these gestures, were the stinging salt on the wounds of an already battered soul. Inside his room, Naruto sought refuge in the silence that only magnified the echoes of hatred and neglect. The symphony of pain resonated in the emptiness, forming an oppressive melody that mirrored the isolation he endured. Dreams of becoming the strongest ninja became the lifeline for his shattered spirit, a desperate yearning for acknowledgement from those who turned a blind eye to the boy behind the fox. The scars etched on Naruto's body and soul told a harrowing tale of a childhood entrenched in prejudice and abandonment. Yet, amidst the darkness, a spark of resilience flickered. Naruto, the outcast, clung to the belief that he could transcend the shackles of their judgment proving to the world that he was more than the monster they painted him to be. In the dim confines of his room, Naruto sank to the floor, exhaustion weighing heavy on his bruised and battered body. The relentless barrage of abuse had taken its toll, both physically and emotionally. With each lab or breath, he felt the weight of the villagers' disdain pressing down on him. The room echoed with the ghostly whispers of the villagers' scorn, amplifying his sense of isolation. As Naruto closed his eyes, seeking solace in the darkness, an unexpected sensation washed over him. It was as if the air itself had changed, becoming charged with an energy that tingled against his skin. In the hushed stillness, a spectral presence emerged, the nine-tailed fox, the demon sealed within him, materialized in the recesses of his mind. The fox's immense form appeared, ethereal and imposing. However, instead of hostility, Naruto sensed a strange empathy emanating from the creature. The demon's eyes, normally fierce and malevolent, softened as they regarded the weary boy before him. Naruto, the fox spoke with a voice that reverberated through the mental landscape. I've witnessed the depth of your pain and the strength within your spirit. Do not succumb to the darkness they cast upon you. Your dreams are worth fighting for. Naruto, eyes widened in surprise, hesitated before responding. Why would you care? You're the nine-tailed fox, the one they hate. Why help me the fox's expression softened further, a glint of understanding in its eyes. Our fates may be intertwined, but within you resides a flame that refuses to be extinguished. I've seen the dreams you hold, the aspirations that burn brighter than their hatred. Embrace your strength, 
Naruto. Use it to prove them wrong. Do not let the shadows define your path. In that surreal mental realm, a newfound determination flickered in Naruto's eyes. The fox's words resonated, providing a spark of hope in the abyss of despair. You're not alone, Naruto. Live, fight, and make them regret underestimating the power within you. The nine-tailed fox encouraged, fading away as Naruto absorbed its words. With a renewed sense of purpose, Naruto rose from the floor, ready to face the challenges ahead and forge a destiny that would defy the cruel expectations imposed upon him. Embracing the newfound connection with Kirima, Naruto's spirit ignited with determination. The fox, now a mentor in the sanctuary of his mind, guided him towards honing his skills. In the secluded training grounds, hidden away from judgmental eyes, Naruto immersed himself in the pursuit of mastery. With relentless perseverance, he delved into the secrets of his father's techniques. The flying thunder god and Rasengan became his canvas, and Naruto, the artist, painted his own strokes of innovation. Days blurred into nights as Naruto refined and molded the techniques, pushing the boundaries of their potential. Kurama's wisdom echoed in his mind, urging him to surpass expectations. The once isolated and broken boy now found solace in the relentless pursuit of strength. At the age of 12, Naruto's prowess became a spectacle, even drawing the reluctant admiration of his homeroom teacher, Iruka Sensei. In the academy, his peers continued to antagonize and belittle him, unable to fathom the transformation within Naruto. Look at him, thinking he can actually be someone. The demon's puppet will always be a failure, jeered one of his classmates. Yet, Naruto remained undeterred, his resolve unshaken. One day, as he trained tirelessly on the academy grounds, a group of bullies surrounded him, their mocking laughter resonating. What's the point, Naruto? You'll never be anything more than a freak, sneered a taller boy. Naruto's response, a confident smile, only fueled their frustration. Amidst the adversity, Iruka sensei emerged, stern eyes assessing the situation. Enough. Naruto may be different, but he's working harder than any of you. Show some respect for your fellow shinobi. His words carried authority, silencing the bullies momentarily. However, the disdain lingered, making Naruto's path a lonely one. In the final year of the academy, Naruto's abilities surpassed even seasoned Janins. However, he concealed his true strength, choosing to remain an enigma to those around him. His bullies were not faceless adversaries but his own classmates and siblings, Menma, Mito, Sakura, Ino, Sasuke. The daily antagonism only fueled Naruto's determination to keep his true potential hidden. As Naruto honed his skills, he sought refuge in the dense forest surrounding the leaf village. There, he trained tirelessly, drawing upon the ancient wisdom whispered by the rustling leaves and flowing streams. Nature became his ally, and in those secluded moments, Naruto unlocked all five chakra natures, becoming one with the elements. The academy days were marked by a stark contrast. Naruto, once a broken spirit, had transformed into a cold, distant figure. He became less reliant on his parents, recognizing the futility of yearning for love from those who harbored only hatred. His heart, though kind, remained guarded, a fortress against the pain inflicted by his peers. His legend, however, transcended the academy grounds. Naruto, known as Shadow among the ninja ranks, was a living enigma. Stories circulated of his swift interventions, thwarting intruders without revealing his identity. Cold-blooded efficiency characterized his actions, leaving no trace behind. The whispers of this mysterious figure added to Naruto's solitary existence, a silent protector concealed in the shadows. The academy corridors may have echoed with hollow accolades, but Naruto's journey went beyond seeking recognition. He carried the weight of a solitary soul, fueled by the desire to prove that he was more than the demon they labeled him to be. As he faced the challenges ahead, his gaze fixed on the future, a future where his strength would speak louder than the scornful words of his classmates and siblings. As the moon hung low in the night sky, casting an ethereal glow over the leaf village, Naruto emerged from the training grounds, sweat soaked and fatigued. The weight of his ideals pressed upon him, a constant reminder of the path he sought to carve, one that surpassed even the legendary Hashirama Senju. Exhausted but unwavering, he wandered towards the Uchiha compound, drawn by a distant disturbance that echoed through the silent night. At the heart of the Uchiha compound, 
Chaos unfolded as Janins from the Cloud Village launched a surprise attack. Naruto's entrance was swift, a whirlwind of shadows and precise strikes. The air hummed with the resonance of Kune and the flicker of Jutsus as he confronted the assailants. His eyes met Tsuki Uchiha's, a classmate whose icy exterior hid her vulnerability. Witnessing her distress, Naruto's actions became a dance of cold determination. Each strike aimed at protecting those he cared about. In the aftermath, with the threat eliminated, Naruto knelt beside Tsuki. The moonlight revealed a mixture of gratitude and uncertainty in her eyes. Thank you, she whispered, breaking the silence. Naruto, his voice steady, replied, it's what any shinobi would do. His gaze lingered for a moment longer before he disappeared into the shadows, leaving Tsuki in a momentary daze with a blush on her face which showed through her tears of fear. There was a reason for Shadow's sudden leave, more like three reasons. Three figures showed up to the scene which Naruto knew way too well due to their immense reputation. Fugaku Uchiha, the leader of the Uchihas and a man to fear as he was held in the same limelight as his own father, one who would defeat 1000 shinobi from just a glance. Itachi Uchiha, his eldest son and a generational genius who was able to become an Anbu captain at only the age of 13 and became no for his cold-blooded powers as they would leave no trace of enemies threatening the leaf. Also rumored to have awakened the Monjekayo Sherigan recently when his whole team was wiped out by a platoon of high-ranking shinobi of the Stone Village. An eye that could even control the majestic Nine Tails himself. And lastly, the deadliest one of them all. Rumored to have been an even greater shinobi than the other two one who could probably attack a wall ninja village by himself and take out most of their forces. One who could stand up to most of the current generation of cages. One who would be able to wipe out over a 1000 shinobi just as fast as the fourth Hokage himself. Shisu Uchiha, known as the strongest Uchiha currently. Naruto did not want a confrontation with these three individuals as he knew that he stood no hope in keeping his identity a secret if he were to come in contact with these three shinobi. As he melted into the forest, the footsteps of pursuer echoed behind him. Shisu, a skilled Uchiha, swiftly caught up to Naruto. The confrontation was inevitable, and Naruto, ever bold, questioned the intentions of the Uchiha clan. Shisu then asked why protect them? What's in it for you he demanded, his voice carrying the weight of skepticism. Naruto replied by saying, my own desires and selfishness. I who strive for my selfish goal indulge in acts that take others lives for my own sake. Shisu, unfazed, saw through Naruto's facade. I saw you back there. Your actions spoke louder than words. You're not as selfish as you claim. He replied, a cryptic smile playing on his lips. The acknowledgement Naruto yearned for lingered in the air. The forest enveloped them, a canvas of shadows and moonlight. As Naruto, unable to maintain his emotional armor, revealed himself. I'm just doing what I can to make this world a better place. He admitted, vulnerability coloring his tone. Shisu, moved by Naruto's honesty, extended more than gratitude. You're more than you think, he remarked, offering not just friendship but the prospect of shared goals. Naruto, for the first time, felt the warmth of understanding. The bond they forged that night transcended the boundaries of their backgrounds, echoing the connection Naruto had with Kirima. In the dim forest, a promise was made, a friendship that would not only bring training but genuine support on the journey towards their respective destinies. As shadows danced in the moonlit forest, Naruto felt a moment of vulnerability that he seldom allowed. With a deep breath, he removed the mask that concealed his face, revealing himself to Shisu. The Uchiha's eyes widened as he took in the sight of a young boy, much younger than he had anticipated, standing before him with an aura of strength that defied his age. I'm not even a genin yet, but I couldn't stand by and watch them hurt people, Naruto admitted, his voice resonating with a mixture of determination and weariness. Shisu, a master of perception, studied the boy before him. You're not just strong physically, you've got a strength of character most adults lack, he remarked. Then, Naruto surprised Shisu further by activating the Sharingan. Shisu's eyes widened as he realized the significance of this revelation. You unlock the Sharingan at such a young age he exclaimed, astonished. Naruto nodded, sharing the story of how he awakened it at the tender age of three. His mother's neglect during those early years prompted him to keep it hidden, as revealing it would only add to the hostility he already faced from the villagers. Shisu, recognizing the weight Naruto carried, 
offered genuine comfort. You're already a stronger man than most will ever be. Naruto. He said placing a reassuring hand on the young boy's shoulder. The acknowledgement Naruto sought echoed in Shisu's words. From that night forward, Naruto and Shisu committed to daily training sessions. Shisu, true to his word, accompanied Naruto home. As Naruto approached his family's residence, he overheard hushed conversations about Shadow, the mysterious figure who had become the talk of the village for his incredible strength. Dismissing the chatter, Naruto arrived home to a familiar scene of neglect. The next day, news of Shadow's heroic act at the Uchiha compound spread like wildfire. Tsuki Uchiha, the girl he had saved, became the center of attention in their class. Unnoticed, Naruto took his seat at the back, engrossed in a scroll on ceiling jutsus, as he continued to hone his skills in solitude. The contrast between the village's admiration for Shadow and his family's indifference toward him was a stark reminder of the isolation Naruto had grown accustomed to. Yet, he pressed on, driven by his ideals and the promise of a newfound friendship that transcended the shadows he navigated. The bustling atmosphere of the academy courtyard shifted as Tsuki Uchiha, the enigmatic classmate of Naruto, decided it was time to bridge the gap she had kept for so long. Her cold exterior, a defense mechanism to mask her shyness, began to thaw. Approaching Naruto with determination in her eyes, she spoke softly. Hey, Naruto. Can we talk Naruto? Caught off guard by the sudden change in her demeanor, eyed her warily but nodded cautiously. Sure. What's up Tsuki took a deep breath, her eyes revealing a mix of curiosity and sincerity. I've been wanting to talk to you for a while now. I've always been interested in getting to know you, but I, I was too shy. Naruto, somewhat surprised by her honesty, replied, really, you always seemed so distant. Tsuki nodded, I know, and I'm sorry for that, it's just, I wasn't sure how to approach you. As the conversation unfolded, Naruto's guard began to lower. They talked about their dreams, aspirations, and the challenges they faced in the academy. Slowly, a tentative friendship started to blossom, revealing the layers beneath the surface they had never shared before. However, this newfound connection did not sit well with Menma, Naruto's younger brother, Menma, who had harbored feelings for Tsuki and faced rejection on multiple occasions, couldn't stand seeing Naruto getting close to her. Consumed by jealousy, he decided to intervene and approached Tsuki, acting like she was his girlfriend. Naruto, back off. She's mine. Menma declared his, tone laced with possessiveness. Naruto, puzzled by the sudden hostility, glanced at Tsuki, who seemed equally bewildered. Before any further discussion could unfold, Menma attempted to escalate the situation. He summoned a Rasengan, a technique he had recently mastered, and lunged towards Naruto in an attempt to assert dominance. Naruto, recognizing the need to defuse the situation, met Menma's attack with controlled precision. The courtyard became a stage for their altercation. In the intricate dance of hand-to-hand -hand combat, Naruto displayed finesse and mastery over his techniques, evading Menma's attacks effortlessly. As Menma launched the Rasengan, Naruto countered with grace, redirecting the force without causing harm. The fight unfolded like a carefully choreographed dance, a display of Naruto's ability to control the situation without succumbing to aggression. The courtyard watched in awe as Naruto, with a calm resolve, defused the tension. In the aftermath, Tsuki stood between the two brothers, her gaze reflecting concern for the strained family dynamics. The encounter, though turbulent, marked a turning point in the relationship that would shape Naruto's journey, both as a ninja and as an individual navigating the complex web of emotions and connections. The stifling tension in the principal's office was palpable as Naruto and Menma were summoned flanked by the stern visages of their parents, Kashina and Minato. The room, typically a place for addressing minor issues, now bore witness to the unraveling of familial dynamics. Naruto's heart sank, anticipating another confrontation with his family, but the situation escalated as Menma took the opportunity to weave a web of lies. Menma accused Naruto of making Tsuki uncomfortable, painting a deceitful picture of Naruto's actions. Naruto, bewildered and silenced, never got a chance to present his side of the story as their parents seemed to gravitate towards Menma's narrative. Kashina's scowl deepened, and Minato's disappointment etched lines on his usually calm face. 
The atmosphere grew thick with tension as the parental figures scolded both boys, the weight of their words directed predominantly at Naruto. Menma's deceit had successfully cast Naruto as the villain, facing the brunt of the blame. The consequences for Naruto, if left unaddressed, were severe punishments that would only exacerbate the alienation he felt within his own family. Just as the weight of judgment seemed poised to crush Naruto's spirit entirely, the office door swung open, and Tsuki barged in with a determined expression. Her eyes bore witness to the injustice unfolding within the room, and she refused to let the lies stand and challenge. I need to speak up, Tsuki declared, cutting through the tension. She unraveled the truth, exposing Menma's deceit and affirming Naruto's innocence. Menma's facade crumbled, his cheeks flushing with embarrassment. The principal, now armed with the actual facts, directed stern looks at both Naruto and Menma. The truth had emerged, saving Naruto from the unjust punishment he was about to endure. Tsuki's courage not only exposed the deceit but also spared Naruto from further harm. As Naruto gazed at Tsuki with a mixture of gratitude and sadness, she could discern the heaviness in his eyes. The spark of hope he had harbored for acceptance within his family had dimmed further. Yet, with a small smile and a quiet thank you, Naruto acknowledged Tsuki's intervention, finding solace in the fact that, at least for now, the truth prevailed. The complexities of his family relationships lingered, but in that moment, Tsuki had been a beacon of honesty, sparing him from the harsh consequences concocted by those who should have provided unwavering support. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting a golden hue over the dense forest near Konoha. As the academy bell signaled the end of classes, Naruto found himself drawn to the tranquility of the woods. Tsuki, feeling an unspoken connection with him, approached silently, her footsteps soft against the fallen leaves. The rustling trees created a cocoon of privacy, a space where Naruto often sought solace. Hey, Naruto, Tsuki spoke gently her, eyes reflecting a mix of curiosity and concern. Can we talk Naruto turned to face her, his gaze meeting hers in a moment of silent understanding. They found a secluded spot beneath the sheltering branches, where whispers of the wind and the distant sounds of the village formed a backdrop to their conversation. Tsuki, sensing the weight Naruto carried, asked a question that had lingered in the unspoken spaces between them. Can you tell me about your past, about your life here in Konoha Naruto, usually guarded, felt an unfamiliar urge to open up to Tsuki. As he began to share his story, the dam of emotions he had held back for so long threatened to burst. Growing up, I never knew what it felt like to be loved or accepted, Naruto began, his voice carrying the weight of years of solitude. My parents, Minato and Kashina, never treated me like their son. They didn't even look at me. The villagers, they despised me because of the nine-tailed fox sealed inside me. He paused, his eyes clouded with memories of loneliness and rejection. My mother stopped caring for me when I was just three. And my father, he never stood up for me. I was left to fend for myself. An outcast even in my own home. Tsuki listened intently her heart aching for the pain Naruto had endured, she encouraged him to continue, a silent promise to bear witness to his unspoken sorrows, the villagers, they treat me like I'm not even human, Naruto continued his, voice cracking with the weight of his suppressed emotions, I tried so hard to gain their acceptance, but no matter what I did, they never saw me, I'm a ninja, training every day, hoping that one day they would acknowledge me, but it's like I'm invisible, a shadow in the village, Tsuki's eyes glistened with unshed tears as she saw Naruto lay bare his deepest wounds. What about your family? Your brother Menma a bitter smile played on Naruto's lips. Menma, he's always resented me. He's jealous because I have something he doesn't the nine tails. But even beyond that, he despises me for who I am. For being different. My family chose to believe lies about me. And I'm left alone. Isolated. The forest seemed to hold its breath absorbing Naruto's pain as he continued to unveil the layers of his troubled existence. I've dreamt of being the Hokage, the strongest ninja, hoping that if I achieved greatness, they would finally see me. But every time I take a step forward, they push me back, reminding me that I'm just a failure. Tsuki's tears fell freely now, mirroring the emotional storm that raged within Naruto. Naruto, I had no idea you were going through all this. I'm so sorry. He looked at her, a mix of despair and resignation in his eyes. This village, 
This place that should be my home. It's the loneliest place on earth. I don't know if I can keep going like this. Tsupi. Sometimes. It feels like there's no hope left. The forest. A silent witness to Naruto's confession. Seemed to cradle his pain. Tsuki, overwhelmed by the raw vulnerability he had laid bare, reached out and embraced him. Naruto, you're not alone. You don't have to carry this burden by yourself as Naruto's tears mingled with hers. Tsuki whispered words of comfort, promising to stand by him in the face of the unforgiving shadows that had haunted him for far too long. In the embrace of the quiet forest, two wounded souls found solace in shared vulnerability, forging a connection that transcended the pain of their pasts. Perched atop a sturdy branch, Shisu Uchiha listened in silence, concealed by the leaves and shadows. A soft smile played on his lips as he witnessed the emotional exchange between Naruto and Tsuki. He marveled at the resilience of the young Uzumaki, finding solace in the realization that Naruto had discovered someone willing to stand by his side. However, as he observed the depth of Naruto's pain, Shisu decided that today was not the day to reveal his presence. Instead, he opted to grant Naruto a reprieve, allowing him to savor the newfound connection. With a deft touch, Shisu sealed his chakra, ensuring his invisibility from the pair below. Sending a crow to Naruto, Shisu informed him of a mission that required his immediate attention. The message conveyed that their training would be postponed until next week, subtly hinting that it was a chance for Naruto to catch his breath and gather his emotions before delving into the rigorous training that awaited him. Shisu had no intention of going easy on Naruto. The coming sessions were meant to be intense and demanding. As Naruto, deep in conversation with Tsuki, found the letter left by the crow, Shisu had already melted into the shadows of the forest leaving the two friends to navigate the delicate complexities of their emotions without the looming presence of impending training. It was a calculated decision, a gesture of support aimed at giving Naruto the time he needed to embrace the newfound connection and prepare himself for the challenges that lay ahead. As the moon ascended to its zenith, Tsuki and Naruto found solace beneath the guardian branches of the ancient trees. The forest, once a witness to Naruto's solitude, now cradled them in its quiet embrace. They spoke under the shimmering canopy, their words weaving a tapestry of shared pain, dreams, and aspirations. The ominous shadows and distant calls of nocturnal creatures acted as silent sentinels, preserving the sanctity of their intimate conversation. The night unfolded, an offering of understanding and connection, as the two broken souls nestled in each other's arms. The rustling leaves and gentle whispers of the wind echoed the depth of their bond, a fragile yet resilient thread that intertwined their stories into a tapestry of shared vulnerability. Under the watchful gaze of the moon and the comforting arms of the forest, Naruto and Tsuki discovered an unexpected sanctuary, a haven of acceptance that transcended the harsh realities of their pasts. In the hushed sanctuary of the forest, beneath the solemn gaze of the moon, Tsuki unraveled the threads of her heartbreaking past to Naruto, her tears becoming constellations in the night sky. As she spoke, Naruto held her tightly, a silent promise to bear the weight of her pain alongside her. I know the sting of loneliness all too well, Naruto. She began her, voice a fragile whisper, born into the esteemed Uchiha clan. I lived in the shadows cast by my brothers, Itachi and Sasuke. Itachi, a generational genius, and Sasuke, my twin, both seemingly destined for greatness. Naruto's grip tightened, a silent acknowledgement of the shared sorrow that wove their stories together. Tsuki continued, Itachi's brilliance became the beacon that overshadowed my every effort. The Uchiha compound echoed with his accomplishments, leaving me confined to the penumbras of his greatness. My father's expectations were like a heavy cloak, suffocating any chance for my light to shine independently. The moon bore witness to Tsuki's pain as she spoke of the relentless comparisons that haunted her existence. Sasuke, my twin, mirrored Itachi's success effortlessly. The two of them became the embodiment of Uchiha prowess, while I remained an afterthought, lost in the shadows of their achievements. My father's stern gaze rarely acknowledged my efforts, deeming them insignificant in the face of my brother's brilliance. Naruto's silent empathy resonated through the night as Tsuki shared the loneliness that seeped into her very core. Nights were my refuge, and the courtyard that once echoed with family celebrations became an echo chamber for my silent struggles. The moon witnessed my tears, shed in solitude as I grappled with the weight of familial expectations Tsuki's voice wavered, 
The pain of her past lay bare. I dreamt of breaking free from the stifling expectations, of proving my worth beyond familial comparisons. The desire to shine independently, away from the looming specters of Itachi and Sasuke, fueled my determination. But the shadows clung to me, and the weight of my loneliness became an anchor, pulling me deeper into the darkness. As she spoke, Naruto tightened his embrace, understanding the depth of her pain. Tsuki continued, you and I, Naruto, share the ache of neglect. In the stillness of this forest, I find solace in your arms. Together, we navigate the desolate landscapes of our pasts, seeking a glimmer of light that can pierce through the darkness. In the embrace of the moonlit night, Tsuki bared her soul, finding a confidant in Naruto. The forest, their silent witness, echoed with the shared sorrow of two neglected souls seeking solace in each other's arms creating a sanctuary where their tears became the poignant ink of shared tales of loneliness and resilience. Under the watchful guidance of Shisu, the training grounds became a crucible where Tsuki and Naruto honed their skills. The air charged with the crackle of chakra and the rustle of leaves bearing witness to their relentless efforts. Shisu, the elder brother figure, instilled discipline and refined their techniques with a meticulous approach. On one occasion, Shisu introduced them to a complex Teijutsu sequence. This form demands precise movements and keen awareness of your opponent's intentions. Naruto, Tsuki, observed closely, he demonstrated the fluid dance of strikes, each movement seamlessly blending into the next. Your bodies are your weapons, let them move as an extension of your will. Naruto, a ball of energy, attempted to mimic the intricate sequence. Like this, right he questioned, limbs moving with a mix of determination and uncertainty. Shisu chuckled patting Naruto's shoulder, close, Naruto, but your stance needs more stability, Tsuki, show him the subtle adjustments, Tsuki, her Sharingan focused, executed the sequence with a finesse that left Naruto in awe, see, Naruto, it's all about balance and control, your energy is impressive, just channel it more efficiently, their training sessions wove a tapestry of shared experiences and growing camaraderie, in the quieter moments between exercises, Naruto and Tsuki found themselves engaged in banter and laughter, the connection between them deepening, Naruto, ever the spirited conversationalist, often teased Tsuki about her intense focus during training, hey, Tsuki, you've got this whole stoic ninja thing down pat, lighten up a bit Tsuki smirked, a playful glint in her eyes, maybe I'm just saving my energy for when you inevitably challenge me to a sparring match, their playful exchanges hinted at an underlying warmth that transcended the rigors of training, in the evenings, after the grueling sessions, they would often find solace in the quiet corners of the academy, discussing everything from dreams to fears. The shadows of their pasts retreated in the face of shared aspirations. As the days melted into weeks, the training regimen delved into elemental manipulation. Shisu, ever the meticulous instructor, guided them through the intricacies of molding chakra for different affinities. Although Naruto had mastery over all five affinities he decided to hold back a tiny bit and instead of showing off he instead helped Tsuki with her training alongside Shisu. As they delved deeper into their training, the bond between Tsuki and Naruto evolved beyond that of training partners. Shisu, sensing the unspoken connection, became an advocate for their shared journey, providing counsel and encouragement. In the quiet hours of evening, beneath the blooming sakura tree near the academy, Naruto and Tsuki found moments of respite. The falling petals mirrored the delicate dance of their hearts as they navigated the uncharted waters of burgeoning affection. You know, Tsuki, you're not as cold as you want people to believe, Naruto remarked, his eyes reflecting sincerity. Tsuki, her expression softening, replied, and you're not just the cold and insignificant ninja the village sees, there's more to you, Naruto their hands brushed, a fleeting touch that spoke volumes, Shisu, observing from a distance, saw the blossoming of a connection that transcended the realms of training and camaraderie, as the day of their final exam approached, Naruto and Tsuki walked hand in hand to the academy, their shared smiles echoing the harmony that had flourished during their months of shared training. Shisu, the silent architect of their journey, stood in the shadows with a sense of fulfillment, proud to have played a role in fostering not just skilled shinobi but kindred souls destined for greatness. 
By this point Naruto had revealed Tatsuki his Sharingan and the fact he is Shadow and hoped she wouldn't be mad at him for keeping it to himself for a while. However, she wasn't surprised. She always knew that Naruto held back in their training for her sake and that made her fall for him more and more as he always did things for her. The exam went really well for them as they were both two of the most talented people in the academy both being able to graduate early but chose not to as Tsuki had no self-esteem at the time and Naruto wanted no extra attention from the village as it never ended well. In a solemn moment under the towering walls of the Hidden Leaf Academy, Iruka Yumino stood before the aspiring young shinobi. The weight of their dreams and struggles reflected in his eyes. The air hung heavy with a sense of accomplishment and a hint of bittersweet nostalgia as the journey of the class reached its poignant end. Ladies and gentlemen of the Hidden Leaf, Iruka began, his voice carrying the gravity of the occasion. Today marks the end of a chapter and the beginning of a new era for each one of you. As your homeroom teacher, I've had the privilege of witnessing the growth, resilience, and unwavering spirit that defines this remarkable class. He cast his gaze across the faces, each bearing the scars of battles both seen and unseen. You've faced challenges that tested your mettle, and you emerged stronger, in every triumph. In every stumble, you've shaped the very fabric of the shinobi you are becoming. Iruka's eyes lingered on Naruto and Tsuki, the duo whose journey had been a testament to perseverance and the transformative power of friendship. Naruto and Tsuki, your dedication and camaraderie have not only fueled your individual growth but have inspired all those around you. Your journey exemplifies the indomitable spirit of a shinobi. The students listened intently. Memories of shared laughter, tears and late night training sessions flashing before their eyes. Remember, Iruka continued, his words resonating with a profound sincerity. Being a shinobi is not just about mastering jutsu or missions. It's about forging bonds, standing united in the face of adversity, and carrying the flame of hope even in the darkest of times. He paused, allowing the weight of his words to settle. As you embark on your individual paths, let the lessons you've learned here guide you. Be vigilant, be compassionate, and never forget the bonds you've formed. The threads that connect you to your comrades are as vital as the techniques you've honed. Iruka's gaze softened, his pride for each student evident in his expression. You are the future of the hidden leaf, and I have no doubt that each of you will carve a legacy worthy of remembrance. As you venture forth, Carry the spirit of camaraderie, the resilience in the face of adversity, and the unwavering resolve to protect those dear to you. The academy courtyard echoed with the unspoken emotions of farewells and new beginnings. Iruka, the stalwart guide, concluded with a heartfelt. May your journeys be filled with purpose and your bonds endure the tests of time. Go forth, my students, and may you shine as the bright stars you are destined to be. With those words. The class disbanded, leaving behind memories etched into the walls of the Hidden Leaf Academy, a testament to the indelible mark each aspiring shinobi had left on one another's lives. After everyone had left the only three remaining were Iruka, Naruto and Tsuki. Amidst the stirring atmosphere of the graduation ceremony, Iruka Yumino took a moment to step forward his gaze fixing upon Naruto Uzumaki. The resonance of pride and admiration emanated from his words as he addressed the resilient young shinobi. Naruto, Iruka began his voice carrying a profound sense of appreciation as your homeroom teacher I stand here today not just to celebrate your graduation but to acknowledge the remarkable journey you've undertaken. Despite the adversities, the disdain, and the isolation, you've not only persevered but excelled. His eyes locked with Naruto's. Iruka continued, your resilience, your unyielding spirit, and the bonds you've forged have set you apart. It's not just about mastering techniques or passing exams. It's about the intangible strength that resides within you. The strength to transcend hatred and emerge with a heart open to friendship. Iruka's expression softened, a genuine warmth in his eyes. And speaking of friendship, I must commend you for forming a bond that defied expectations. Tsuki. Thank you for seeing beyond the prejudice, for standing by Naruto when others chose to turn away. Your friendship has been a beacon of light in Naruto's life, a testament to the transformative power of understanding and compassion. He turned back to Naruto, a proud smile gracing his features. Naruto, your journey has not been an easy one, but here you stand, a testament to your unwavering resolve, 
Graduating is not just about academic achievements, it's about the growth of character, the triumph over challenges, and the relationships that shape who you are. Iruka extended a hand toward Naruto, the unspoken pride evident in his gesture. I'm proud of the shinobi you've become, Naruto Uzumaki. May your future endeavors be as resilient as your spirit, and may the bonds you've formed guide you through the shadows into the light. Congratulations on your graduation as Naruto and Suki emerged from the academy. The celebratory air around them was tainted with a bittersweet realization. The sea of faces that once filled the surroundings had dispersed, leaving only two figures waiting for them, Itachi and Shisu. The siblings exchanged a glance, a subtle acknowledgement of the unspoken understanding that their families remained absent. For Tsuki, the absence wasn't as crushing as before. She felt the silent presence of Itachi, her elder brother, who had always been her silent guardian. As she approached him, emotions welled up, and she enveloped him in a tight hug. Itachi, though not one to display his feelings openly, reciprocated the embrace, silently conveying his pride in her achievements. On the other side, Naruto's gaze swept over the empty courtyard, a pang of longing tugging at his heart. Shisu, noticing the melancholy in the young ninja's eyes, offered a reassuring smile. Naruto managed a small nod, grateful for the mentor who had become a pillar of support. The absence of Minato, Kushina, Menma, and Mito felt like a familiar wound, and despite anticipating it, the emptiness still stung. In the midst of their unvoiced sorrows, Kurama's voice resonated in Naruto's mind, breaking the silence. You did a great job, Naruto. I'm incredibly proud of you. The words were a soothing balm, a reminder that, even in the absence of familial acknowledgement, Naruto had a steadfast companion in Kurama. As Tsuki wiped away a stray tear, she glanced at Naruto, sensing his unspoken turmoil. Shisu, perceptive as ever, approached the duo. Congratulations, both of you. Your journey has only just begun, and I have no doubt that you'll surpass all expectations the trio stood together, a makeshift family forged through shared struggles and mutual support. As they walked away from the silent courtyard, the bond between Naruto, Tsuki, Shisu, and the unseen presence of Itachi became a source of strength. A reminder that family wasn't always bound by blood but by the bonds nurtured through shared experiences and unspoken understanding. The evening sun dipped below the horizon, casting an amber glow over a Chiraku ramen. Naruto and Tsuki entered, anticipating a celebratory meal for their graduation. However, the festive atmosphere shifted when they noticed Naruto's family occupying a corner booth. Minato and Kushina smiled. Menma nodded, but Mito's expression was a storm brewing with disdain. As Naruto and Tsuki approached, Mito scoffed. What's this? The village failure managed to scrape through the academy? Must be some mistake. Her words hung heavy in the air, a toxic mixture of disdain and mockery. Tsuki placed a reassuring hand on Naruto's shoulder, attempting to shield him from the verbal assault. Ignore her, Naruto. You've achieved something remarkable. Yet, Mito persisted, her words cutting deeper. No wonder no one expected anything from you. A disgrace to the Namike's name. Shisu, his eyes narrowing, intervened. That's enough, Mito. Your words are unwarranted and disrespectful. Itachi, ever composed, added, Naruto has proven his strength and resilience. Show some respect, Mito, undeterred continued her tirade until both Shisu and Itachi made it clear they had lost all respect for the Namike's family. The confrontation ended with a stern warning, leaving the Namike's family isolated in their prejudices. Deciding to shift the mood, Shisu suggested a barbecue instead. The Namike's family grudgingly agreed, making it evident they disliked sharing a meal with Naruto. As the sizzling sounds of the barbecue filled the air, Naruto sat somewhat apart, his mood visibly dampened. Tsuki, however, refused to let the negativity linger. With genuine enthusiasm, she engaged Naruto in conversation, recounting moments of their academy journey. Shisu joined in, praising Naruto's growth and hinting at the mastery he had achieved in replicating Minato's techniques. Believe me, Naruto, you've become a greater shinobi and man than your father ever was, Shisu declared. His words a balm to Naruto's wounded pride. Itachi, acknowledging Naruto's prowess, nodded in agreement. Just as the tension began to dissipate, Iruka walked in, having been invited by the Uchihas to join the celebration. Iruka, aware of Naruto's struggles, 
congratulated him on his graduation. The makeshift family gathered around the barbecue, a blend of emotions hanging in the air, resentment, acceptance, and the glimmers of a bond formed beyond blood ties. In that moment, the ramen stand transformed into an unlikely setting for a celebration, where resilience triumphed over prejudice, and the bonds of friendship prevailed over the shackles of family disdain. The sun cast a warm glow over the village, signaling the end of the week-long respite granted to the recent academy graduates. For Naruto and Tsuki, this interlude from training was a welcomed departure from their rigorous routine. Shisu, acting as a wise guide, insisted that they savor this fleeting moment of normalcy before the mantle of responsibility descended upon them. During this hiatus, an unexpected transformation occurred within the Uchiha household. Fugaku, the stern and distant patriarch, found himself gradually thawing under the influence of the newfound warmth radiating from Tsuki. The once stoic father began to comprehend the significance of familial bonds. Realizing the importance of expressing love for all his children equally, he noticed Tsuki's joyous countenance, a sight unseen within the confines of their home. It baffled him, but he knew it was a positive change. His heart softened, and he became determined to bridge the chasm that had existed for far too long. Tsuki, who spent evenings away from home, returned with an air of contentment that hadn't graced her presence before. Fugaku yearned to understand this transformation and decided it was time to break the walls that had kept them estranged. One evening, as the week neared its end, Fugaku gathered his children in the living room. Itachi, Sasuke, and Tsuki exchanged puzzled glances, unsure of what prompted this unusual family meeting. Fugaku, usually reserved, cleared his throat before speaking. I've been too distant, too cold. It's time for a change. He looked at Tsuki with a newfound warmth. Tsuki, you've been spending your time differently lately. I want to meet your friend, the one who brings that smile to your face. Itachi, surprised by this sudden change in his father's demeanor, chuckled softly. Sasuke, too, cracked a rare smile, acknowledging the subtle shift within their family dynamics. Tsuki, however, blushed furiously, unaccustomed to such attention. Itachi's laughter echoed through the room, a rare sound that added an element of humor to the unfolding scene. Realizing the implications, Fugaku inquired, Is this friend of yours someone special? Tsuki stammered, her face now resembling a ripe tomato. W well, dad, he's just a friend, nothing more. Fugaku's eyes twinkled with a paternal glint, something his children hadn't witnessed before. In that case, I'd like to meet him. If he's the reason behind that radiant smile, I want to ensure he's worthy of taking care of my princess. Sasuke snorted, an unexpected reaction that hinted at the changing dynamics within the Uchiha family. Itachi, who seldom displayed mirth, continued to wear a subtle smile. As the week of respite came to an end, Tsuki reluctantly agreed to bring her mysterious friend to meet her family. Itachi, still amused by the situation, teased her, finally introducing him. Ha, huh? it's about time. Sasuke, who had witnessed Naruto's interactions with Tsuki during the week, found himself harboring a modicum of acceptance for the enigmatic blonde. He no longer saw Naruto solely as a threat but rather as someone who could protect Tsuki, a sentiment he never thought he'd entertain. As the day approached for Naruto to meet Tsuki's family, a subtle undercurrent of nervous excitement permeated the Uchiha household. Tsuki, still blushing from the revelation that her father wanted to meet her friend, decided it was time for Naruto to meet her mother, Mikoto, as well. Mikoto, a presence often overshadowed by Fugaku's stoicism, had been observing the unfolding dynamics within her family with a keen eye. She had noticed the newfound warmth between Tsuki and her father, a transformation that intrigued her. The prospect of meeting the person responsible for bringing joy to her daughter's life piqued Mikoto's curiosity. On the appointed day, Naruto, adorned in his usual dark attire, found himself standing at the threshold of the Uchiha residence. The air was charged with anticipation, and Tsuki stood by his side, offering silent support. As they entered, the atmosphere shifted. Fugaku's scrutinizing gaze met Naruto's determined eyes, and Sasuke's indifferent disposition hinted at a begrudging acceptance. Itachi's subtle nods conveyed an acknowledgement of Naruto's significance to Tsuki. Yet, the dynamics changed when Mikoto entered the room. Her eyes, typically veiled by a veneer of reserve, 
softened as she regarded Naruto and Tsuki. It was a gaze filled with maternal warmth, a recognition of the bond shared between mother and daughter. Fugaku broke the silence. Naruto Uzumaki, this is my wife. Mikoto Uchiha. Mikoto, this is the young man who has captured Tsuki's attention. Mikoto approached them, her demeanor gentle yet discerning. She extended her hand towards Naruto, a silent invitation for him to introduce himself. Naruto, recognizing the importance of this moment, shook her hand with a respectful nod. As the introductions continued, Mikoto's gaze shifted to Tsuki, who stood beside Naruto. The unspoken communication between mother and daughter revealed a depth of understanding. Mikoto, without uttering a word, acknowledged the transformation in Tsuki's demeanor and the genuine happiness she now radiated. While Fugaku maintained his reserved scrutiny, Mikoto's approach was more intuitive. She saw beyond the societal biases and perceived Naruto through the lens of the joy he brought to her daughter's life. This maternal insight added a layer of complexity to the situation, creating a nuanced atmosphere within the Uchiha household. The room held its breath until Sasuke, surprisingly, spoke up. If he makes Tsuki happy, then that's enough for me. Itachi, too, nodded in approval. The revelation that Naruto had a positive impact on Tsuki's life seemed to sway Fugaku's judgment. Tsuki, who had initially been apprehensive about this meeting, found comfort in her mother's accepting gaze. Mikoto's silent approval served as a bridge between generations, paving the way for a more harmonious family dynamic. As the meeting unfolded, Naruto felt the weight of judgment dissipate, replaced by a tentative acceptance. Mikoto, with her perceptive gaze and warm demeanor, became an unexpected ally in Naruto's journey to be recognized beyond the prejudices that had long surrounded him. The Uchiha family, once characterized by stoicism and distance, now stood at the threshold of transformation. Naruto, by merely being himself, had inadvertently become a catalyst for change within the Uchiha household, earning not only Tsuki's affection but also the subtle acknowledgement of her parents. The week that began with uncertainty now concluded with the promise of evolving familial bonds and the potential for acceptance, proving that sometimes, even the most entrenched attitudes could be reshaped by the warmth of genuine connections. The day of team formations arrived, casting a ripple of anticipation through the academy graduates. Naruto, with a mix of eagerness and apprehension, stood alongside Tsuki as they awaited their team assignment. The atmosphere crackled with tension as Iruka, the instructor, began announcing the teams. Naruto Uzumaki, Tsuki Uchiha, and Sakura Hiruno, Iruka declared, revealing the first team. Naruto couldn't help but feel a surge of excitement at being paired with Tsuki, the friend who had become a beacon of support. Sakura, with her vibrant pink hair, completed their trio. On the opposite end, Menma, Mito, and Sasuke found themselves grouped together, a dynamic team combining different personalities and abilities. The trio represented a mix of Uzumaki and Namake's lineage, each harboring their unique strengths and challenges. Meanwhile, Ino, Shikamaru, and Shoji formed another team, their individual quirks blending into a well-rounded group. Ino's assertiveness, Shikamaru's strategic mind, and Shoji's robust strength promised a formidable combination. Kiba, Shino, and Hinata rounded out the teams, a trio boasting an array of sensory and tracking abilities. Kiba's keen sense of smell, Shino's mastery over insects, and Hinata's acute Byakugan vision created a team with heightened sensory awareness. As the teams were unveiled, a sense of camaraderie and competition permeated the air. Naruto exchanged glances with Tsuki and Sakura, a tacit acknowledgement that their journey as a team had just begun. The challenge ahead loomed large, but for Naruto, the prospect of facing it alongside those he considered friends fueled a newfound determination. Menma, Mito, and Sasuke, despite their familial ties, faced the uncharted territory of working together as equals. The dynamics of their relationships would undoubtedly play a pivotal role in shaping their teamwork. Ino, Shikamaru, and Shoji, known for their shared experiences within the confines of the academy, now embarked on a new chapter. Their familiarity promised a seamless integration of skills and strategies. Kiba, Shino, and Hinata, each with their distinct strengths and abilities, formed a team that blended tracking prowess, sensory perception, and gentle precision. 
As the teams gathered for their first briefing with their respective Jonin leaders, the stage was set for a series of challenges, missions, and shared victories. Team 7, comprised of Naruto, Tsuki, and Sakura, embarked on their shinobi journey with a sense of unity and determination. The bonds forged within this eclectic group would be tested and strengthened on the battlefield, marking the beginning of their collective tale as Team 7. Team 7's Jonin Sensei would be Kakashi. Team 10 Asum, Team 8 Kunai and Team 11 Menma's team had Kashina as their Jonin Sensei. In the quiet clearing, Team 7, led by Kakashi, gathered for a momentous introduction, each member unveiling their dreams to the dappled sunlight filtering through the leaves. Kakashi, as enigmatic as ever, divulged nothing about his aspirations, keeping his goal shrouded in mystery. Sakura, on the contrary, exuded confidence as she proudly declared her ambition to become the greatest medical shinobi in history, her eyes gleaming with determination. Tsuki, though less vocal, shared a simple yet profound dream, to be a great shinobi capable of supporting her family and village. A subtle glance towards Naruto betrayed a deeper connection, a silent acknowledgement of their unspoken understanding and the acceptance of Naruto by Tsuki's family as the one destined to care for her. Finally, Naruto, the beacon of hope in this tumultuous world, spoke with a voice that carried the weight of experience beyond his years. He coldly expressed his desire to eradicate hostility among shinobi and usher in an era of peace. His words resonated like the battle-hardened convictions of a seasoned veteran, a stark reminder that Naruto, at the tender age of 12, had already glimpsed the harsh realities of the world. Each proclamation laid the foundation for Team 7's shared journey, setting the stage for their destinies to unfold amidst the intricate tapestry of the shinobi world. Under the dappled sunlight filtering through the leaves, Team 7 assembled in the training ground, anticipation hanging in the air like a charged jutsu. Kakashi, with his characteristic mask and single Sharingan eye exposed, announced the infamous Bell Test, a trial that had become a rite of passage for aspiring ninja. Naruto, Tsuki, and Sakura, though aware of Kakashi's reputation, met the challenge with a resolute spirit. Naruto, concealing the true extent of his abilities, played the role of bait, a decision Tsuki and Sakura tacitly understood. The test was not just about acquiring the bells, it was a lesson in teamwork, strategy, and resourcefulness. As Kakashi unleashed his formidable skills, Naruto skillfully held back, allowing Tsuki and Sakura to formulate a plan. The two Kunoichi, with their shared understanding of each other's strengths, devised an elaborate strategy. Tsuki's mastery of fire jutsu came into play as she created a dazzling explosion, obscuring Kakashi's vision. In the aftermath of the explosion, Kakashi found himself facing Naruto, seemingly the lone assailant. Unbeknownst to him, Tsuki and Sakura had stealthily maneuvered behind him, ready to strike. The trio executed their plan with precision, catching Kakashi momentarily off guard. It was a testament to their growing teamwork and ingenuity. When Naruto, Sakura, and Tsuki managed to snatch the bells from Kakashi's possession, the Jonin Sensei acknowledged their success. He made it clear that he could have prevented them from taking the bells if he had truly desired. The true essence of the test lay not in the bells but in the lessons learned. Kakashi's words echoed through the clearing, emphasizing the importance of teamwork. Those who break the rules are scum, but those who leave their comrades behind are even worse than scum, he proclaimed. The profound truth of his words resonated with Team 7, imprinting upon them the significance of unity and mutual support. In that transformative moment, Sakura witnessed something entirely unexpected Naruto smiling at both her and Tsuki. It was a genuine expression of joy and camaraderie, a stark contrast to the masked loneliness he had endured throughout their academy years. The realization struck Sakura hard, and she felt a surge of remorse for her past misjudgments. Overwhelmed by the weight of her own realization, Sakura approached Naruto, offering a sincere apology for the years of mistreatment and overlooking the strength that lay within him. Naruto, with a forgiving smile, accepted her apology, the shared experience of the bell test forging a bond among the trio. From that day forward, Team 7 stood united, ready to face the challenges that awaited them, their shared journey marked by trust camaraderie, and the lessons learned under the dappled sunlight of the training ground. In the dimly lit Hokage's office, 
Kakashi stood before Minato, delivering his detailed report on Team 7. The room bore a solemn air, and Minato, though cloaked in the responsibilities of his position, was eager to learn about the progress of the young squad. Kakashi began with an air of reserved excitement. Hokage Sama, Team 7 is shaping up to be an exceptional group of young shinobi. The dynamics between them are truly remarkable, displaying a level of teamwork and understanding rarely seen among fresh genin. Minato, intrigued, leaned forward, his piercing gaze focused on Kakashi as he continued. Tsuki, the Uchiha in the team, exhibits an exceptional proficiency in jutsu, showcasing a mature Sharingan. She seems well versed in a variety of techniques, making her a formidable force. Sakura, the medical expert of the squad, possesses unparalleled chakra control and intelligence, marking her as an invaluable asset. Lastly, Naruto Kakashi paused, a glint of admiration in his eyes. Naruto, despite his unconventional methods, has proven himself to be an outstanding close quarters combatant. In our sparring sessions, even with both of us holding back significantly, he demonstrated an innate talent and battle instinct beyond his years. There's a raw power in him, a potential that's both thrilling and, dare I say, a bit intimidating. Minato, the concerned father, pressed for more information. Tell me more about Naruto. What's he like? What are his goals? Kakashi hesitated before responding. Naruto is a complex individual. Hokage Sama. He fights with the resolve of someone who has seen the darker side of the shinobi world. His dream is ambitious. To bring peace to this world by extinguishing hatred among shinobi. It's clear that he carries a burden. One that adds to the mystery surrounding him. His tenacity and unique perspective on the future make him a fascinating subject. As Kakashi spoke. Minato's expression softened, a mixture of curiosity and a hint of paternal concern. I see. I haven't had much time to get to know Naruto or any of them. It's ironic, isn't it? I'm supposed to protect the village, yet I know so little about my own son. Kakashi offered a reassuring nod. It's not too late. Hokage Sama, Team 7 holds great promise, and your involvement could help shape their destinies. Naruto, especially, might benefit from the guidance of a father. Minato sighed, a mixture of regret and determination in his eyes. You're right, Kakashi. I should learn more about Naruto understand his dreams, his struggles. Thank you for the report. It seems I have some parenting to catch up on. As Kakashi exited the office, the Hokage pondered the untold story of his son, a tale yet to unfold. The bond between Team 7 and their ambitions had ignited a spark of curiosity within Minato, signaling a potential for healing and understanding in the tumultuous life of Naruto Uzumaki. The evening breeze rustled through the quiet streets of Konoha, carrying with it a sense of introspection that seemed to echo Minato's internal turmoil. As he walked through the familiar paths toward his home, he couldn't escape the weight of his recent reflections on the neglect he had unknowingly subjected Naruto to over the years. The genin exams had been a turning point. Celebrations had marked the achievements of many young ninja, but for Minato, it was a sobering moment. A realization dawned on him, a revelation that had the power to reshape his understanding of fatherhood. Amidst the jubilant atmosphere, Minato found himself haunted by a flashback. A glimpse into the neglected past of Naruto. He recalled the prophecy foretold by Jiraiya, the one that prophesied a child of destiny who would bring either great catastrophe or salvation to the world. Blinded by this vision, Minato had fixated on Menma and Mito, the twins born after Naruto, as potential candidates for the child of prophecy. The neglect toward Naruto had been unintentional, fueled by a misguided attempt to mold the twins into the saviors foretold by the prophecy. But in doing so, he had overlooked the very existence of Naruto, a child who bore the weight of his choices without understanding the reasons behind them. It was during the Genin week off, a respite filled with introspection, that Minato decided to unveil the truth he had long ignored. Concealing his presence, he observed Naruto's life from the shadows, like a phantom seeking redemption. The revelation cut deep. As he discovered Naruto's refuge in the living forest, a sanctuary crafted by Tsuki, Shisu, and Itachi, Naruto, clad in dark clothes, spent his days in the company of Tsuki, seeking solace in their shared haven. They trained, explored the village, and forged a connection that transcended the pain of Naruto's past. Yet, the village's disdainful glares persisted, 
casting a shadow over Naruto's every step. As the days unfolded, Minato observed Naruto's unexpected journey into the heart of the Uchiha clan. His son, once shunned and ignored, was now embraced by the Uchihas, finding happiness and acceptance within their family. The sight of Naruto, essentially seeking Tsuki's hand in marriage, shattered any illusions Minato had about his son's contentment within their own home. As he walked home that evening, Minato's steps grew heavier with the weight of regret. His journey had unraveled the layers of neglect and abandonment that Naruto had endured. The realization struck him with the force of a thousand kunai, cutting through the armor of his hawkage status and revealing the flawed human beneath. Minato pondered the path ahead, his footsteps echoing in the quiet streets, each one resonating with a newfound determination to mend the bonds he had unknowingly broken. He couldn't change the past, but the future was a canvas waiting to be painted with the colors of redemption and reconciliation. The moon hung in the night sky, casting a serene glow over the Uchiha compound as Minato stood on the patio, gazing at the family album in his hands. The pages held captured moments of joy, of a family that once flourished under the sunlight of laughter and shared experiences. Yet, as his eyes traced over the images, the painful absence of Naruto in those pictures became increasingly pronounced. Caught in the cascade of memories, Minato was stirred from his contemplation by the distant sound of footsteps. It was Naruto, approaching with a calm yet distant demeanor. Minato turned toward him, hoping to bridge the growing chasm between them. Good evening, Lord Forth. Naruto greeted, his words hanging in the air like a heavy veil. The formality struck Minato, a stark departure from the familial warmth he once took for granted. As father and son walked home together, a silence permeated the air, broken only by the soft sounds of the night. Minato couldn't shake the memories of a time when Naruto, in his innocence, had eagerly addressed him as dad. Now, the title had been replaced by the more detached Lord Forth. Upon reaching home, Minato extended an invitation to join the family for dinner, a small glimmer of hope in the sea of cold formality. Naruto's refusal cut through the air, his words laced with distance and a silent plea to be left alone. As Naruto retreated to his attic sanctuary, Minato's heart weighed heavy. Alone at the patio, he sifted through the family album once more, reliving the moments that seemed to fracture with each passing page. A once happy family seemed a distant memory, overshadowed by the void left by Naruto. Inside his makeshift attic room, Naruto lay restless on the cold floor, surrounded by shadows that mirrored the emptiness he felt within. Something gnawed at his heart, a relentless ache that refused to be silenced. It wasn't just the bitterness of neglect, it was the yearning for something he had never truly known. Tears welled up in Naruto's eyes, a silent reflection of the storm within. In the same silent night, both father and son grappled with the echoes of a fractured connection, the threads of family slipping through their fingers like grains of sand in the wind. The night hung heavy with emotions as Naruto, in a spontaneous move, leaped from his attic window, landing gracefully in front of Minato. Their eyes met, and amid the unspoken pain, an unexpected shared chuckle broke through, the sound mingling with tears that threatened to overflow. With a bittersweet understanding, Naruto settled beside his father on the patio. Minato, overwhelmed by the weight of his past actions, found the courage to apologize, laying bare his regrets and seeking the possibility of forgiveness. Naruto, his gaze piercing through the shadows of the night, contemplated the sincerity in Minato's words. In a surprising turn, Naruto proposed a unique way to bridge the gap between them, a sparring match. The request echoed with a hint of jealousy, a desire for the same bonding experience his siblings shared with Minato. Despite the unconventional nature of the request, Minato, understanding its significance, agreed. The open field became the stage for a father-son confrontation, both fueled by an array of emotions, and beneath the moonlit sky, they prepared for the battle. Naruto, shedding his usual demeanor, warned Minato not to hold back, setting the stage for a clash that held the potential to redefine their relationship. As they faced off, Kurama stirred within Naruto, acknowledging the strength of Minato. The Nine Tails, feigning sleep, revealed that Minato had once defeated him, albeit with some assistance. Naruto, appreciating the challenge that lay ahead, affirmed his readiness to reveal his true strength.
Shedding the facade to become the enigmatic shadow, the air crackled with anticipation as Naruto donned his mask. Assuming the mantle of the formidable figure known as Shadow, the transformation signaled a pivotal moment, a convergence of past regrets and a tentative step toward redemption. The scar between father and son was poised to unfold, the outcome uncertain but laden with the potential to reshape the fractured bonds of a family entangled in shadows of neglect and misunderstanding. The moon hung as a silent witness to the impending clash between Naruto and Minato, father and son now caught in a web of intricate combat. In an instant, the battlefield became a canvas for their dance of shadows, as both ninja vanished and reappeared with the grace of flying thunder god, Minato, the master of space-time jutsu, and Naruto, bearing the elusive Sharingan, engaged in a mesmerizing display of teleportation. The air crackled with anticipation as they weaved between spaces, each trying to anticipate the other's moves. Amidst this intricate dance, Naruto unleashed a surprise, a wind-style raisin shuriken. The enormous, swirling blade of wind disrupted Minato's expectations, eliciting a flicker of shock on the seasoned Hokage's face. As the raisin shuriken soared toward him, Minato reacted swiftly, teleporting away just in time. However, Naruto seized the opportunity, appearing with a blinding speed, launching into an acrobatic Tejutsu combo. His fists met Minato's defenses with a relentless assault, each strike calculated to exploit weaknesses. The Hokage, though momentarily taken aback, regained his composure, acknowledging the prowess of the son he had underestimated for far too long. In the midst of the fast-paced exchange, Minato praised Naruto's growth. You've come a long way, Naruto. Your speed and precision are remarkable, Naruto, with a wry smile, retorted. Guess it's time you see the strength of the new generation, old man, Minato, undeterred, countered with his own array of Rasengan attacks, shadow clones multiplying around him, Naruto, the master of Rasengan himself, anticipated Minato's maneuvers, teleporting between clones with ease, the field erupted with Rasengan's clashing, resonating with the echoes of their chakra-infused fists, as Naruto phased through the shadows, he subtly activated his Sharingan, a fleeting moment Minato barely registered. The Uchiha eyes reflected the intricate threads of battle, but Naruto chose not to unveil the full extent of his abilities just yet. The tide of the fight shifted as Minato infused Sage Mode into his arsenal, his speed and perception heightened to near-perfect levels. Shadows melded with Nature Chakra, creating a vortex of unpredictability. Naruto, momentarily caught off guard, recognized the transition. Minato, now bathed in the ethereal glow of Sage Mode, assessed Naruto. You've got the spirit of a true shinobi, Naruto. But even shadows can't hide from nature's truth. The battlefield transformed into a dynamic arena where Minato, with Sage Mode enhanced reflexes, outmaneuvered Naruto's teleportation. Shadow clones materialized in strategic positions, teleporting simultaneously to unleash a synchronized barrage of Rasengans. In the midst of the chaos, Naruto acknowledged Minato's prowess. You've honed your skills well, old man, but don't think this is the end. The father-son clash continued, an intricate tapestry of jutsu, teleportation, and blows exchanged with increasing ferocity. As the moon cast its glow over the battlefield, the shadows intertwined, revealing glimpses of a bond that transcended the animosity of the past. They both knew this clash of titans was coming to an end, as if they were in sync they both stood at opposite ends of the field looking at each other as to say, this is the end they both dash at each other and clashed one last time. As the Rasengans collided, a surge of ethereal energy rippled through the battlefield, casting another worldly glow across the village. In that moment of impact, a connection transcending physical boundaries occurred between Minato and Naruto. The resonance of their chakra exposed more than just the jutsu. It unveiled the untold pain and solitude etched in Naruto's past. In the grip of sage mode, Minato felt the anguish, the loneliness, and the scars buried within Naruto's heart. A cascade of emotions flooded the Hokage as if he had taken a direct hit from Naruto's life experiences. The village around them seemed to hold its breath the glow intensifying with every passing second. For Naruto, the overwhelming presence of Sage Mode carried more than just physical strength. It became a bridge for Minato to experience the depths of his son's suffering. As the glow enveloped them, Minato confronted the harsh reality of Naruto's brutal childhood, neglect, isolation, 
castigation, and beatings that etched scars on more than just his skin. A poignant flashback unfolded, a lonely child, shunned by the village, finding solace in the rustle of leaves and the whispered promises of the wind. The scene shifted to Naruto being cast aside, friends a distant dream, while the villagers averted their eyes from his existence. Only a handful, like Iruka, extended a hand of compassion. In the depths of Naruto's memories, the flashback reached the darkest moments, the merciless beatings, the relentless isolation, and the constant barrage of disdain. The village seemed an unwelcoming fortress, and Naruto, its solitary prisoner, as the past played out in the mindscape of their collision, Minato, now infused with an intimate understanding of his son's struggles, felt the weight of his neglect and the guilt of being an absentee father. The glow, a manifestation of their emotional clash, illuminated the village, a silent testament to the storm brewing within their hearts. In the midst of the ethereal radiance, Minato, fueled by an unspoken promise, overcame Naruto's resistance. The Rasengan, now a beacon of shared pain and resolution, collided with overwhelming force. The energy burst forth, creating shockwaves that reverberated through the village, awakening only those with keen sensory perception. As the glow faded, Minato, fatigued yet resolute, stood over Naruto. The once antagonistic aura between father and son transformed into a poignant understanding. A shared pain laid bare, a father acknowledging his failures, and a son, now seen beyond the shadows of neglect. Silence embraced them, the echoes of their struggle lingering in the air. The village, unbeknownst to most, bore witness to a conflict that transcended the physical realm, leaving both Minato and Naruto with the weight of newfound comprehension. The clash between Minato and Naruto drew the attention of several notable shinobi, each arriving at the scene to witness the aftermath of the titanic battle. Tsuki, Fugaku, and Itachi, accompanied by Shisu, approached the glowing battleground with a mixture of anticipation and concern. Kakashi, having sensed the intense chakra, and the third hockage, Hiruz and Serutobi, also made their way to the location. Shisu, standing at the forefront, raised his hand to halt the others. Hold on, everyone. This wasn't a real death match, he announced. His Sharingan focused on the remnants of the clash. It was a battle of ideals, a way for them to understand each other through their actions. Fugaku's stern expression softened slightly as he observed the scene, understanding the complexities of the relationship between father and son. Itachi's eyes, usually veiled behind a composed exterior, betrayed a flicker of emotion. Tsuki, on the other hand, couldn't contain her worry for Naruto, her eyes reflecting the depth of her concern. Hiruzen approached Shisu, his gaze fixed on the two figures in the aftermath. What happened here? Shisu Shisu spared a glance at Tsuki before responding. Naruto and Lord Forth had a battle, but it wasn't meant to be lethal. It was a way for them to connect on a deeper level Kakashi, his Sharingan eye still active, analyzed the scene. They fought to understand each other Shisu nodded. Yes, Kakashi. Sometimes, words can't convey the depth of one's feelings and convictions as well as a battle can. As the glow from the battlefield gradually subsided, Naruto, fatigued and exhausted, collapsed. Minato, with fatherly reflexes, caught his son and cradled him in his arms. The onlookers sensed a profound shift in their dynamic. Tsuki, unable to contain herself any longer, hurried forward. Naruto she called out, her voice a blend of worry and relief as she reached his side. Minato, holding Naruto close, reassured Tsuki, he's okay, just exhausted, we both needed this. Fugaku, Itachi, and Shisu exchanged glances, recognizing the unspoken emotions that lingered in the air. Hiruzen approached Minato, a solemn expression on his face. A battle between a father and his son can be a complicated affair. What did you both learn from this? Minato Minato, looking down at Naruto, responded, I learned that I've been blind to his pain for too long. It's time I become a true father to Naruto the gathered shinobi absorbed the weight of those words, realizing that the clash went beyond a mere display of strength. It was a step toward reconciliation and understanding between father and son. Minato, carrying the exhausted Naruto, entered the Uzumaki household to find Kushina waiting with a mix of concern and distrust in her eyes. The remnants of the intense chakra clash outside had stirred her from her sleep, and now, seeing Minato holding Naruto, her expression hardened. Why are you carrying the brat Kushina questioned, 
her tone laced with disdain. What happened out there Minato, usually calm and collected, felt a pang of frustration. He's not a brat, Kushina. He's our son, he asserted, trying to keep his emotions in check. Kushina's eyes narrowed, her animosity towards Naruto evident. Our son she scoffed. That thing is nothing but trouble. I don't know why you bother with him. Minato sighed, feeling the weight of Kushina's resentment. We had a spar, a way for us to understand each other. Naruto is carrying a burden heavier than any of us can imagine. Kushina crossed her arms, unyielding. I don't care. He's a demon child. Minato. I won't accept him as my son. Minato's frustration turned into resignation. He gently laid Naruto on the couch. Exhaustion etched across the young ninja's face. Kushina. He's been through so much pain. So much loneliness. I can't turn my back on him anymore. Kushina remained unmoved. He's not my child. Don't expect me to treat him like one. Minato, torn between his duty as a father and the strain in his relationship with Kushina, sighed heavily. We'll talk about this later. Right now, Naruto needs rest. As Minato walked away, his gaze lingered on Naruto's sleeping form. The clash, intended to bridge the gap between them, had only highlighted the chasm that existed within his own family. The journey towards understanding and acceptance seemed longer than ever. The soft glow of dawn enveloped the village as Naruto rose from his slumber, greeted by the warmth of the morning sun. However, this day carried a unique warmth within his heart. Minato, his father, had stayed by his side throughout the night. A small smile graced Naruto's lips as he appreciated this subtle yet profound gesture. In the quiet moments before dawn, Naruto scribbled a note for Minato, expressing his gratitude for the unexpected companionship. Placing it on the table beside the sleeping form of his father, Naruto silently slipped out of their home, ready to embark on another day of training. The training ground awaited him, where Shisu and Tsuki were already present, both donned in the attire of dedicated shinobi. The camaraderie among the three felt stronger than ever as they prepared for a day of rigorous training. Shisu, with his trademark Uchiha casualness, greeted Naruto. Morning, Naruto. Ready for some serious training Naruto, grinning in response, nodded. Always ready, Shisu sensei. Let's make today count. The morning sun bathed the training ground in a soft glow as Naruto, Tsuki, and Shisu faced each other. Sharingan activated, ready for an intense three-way battle. The air was charged with anticipation as the trio prepared to clash. Naruto, his eyes gleaming with determination, initiated the assault with a swift combination of wind and lightning style jutsu. Razor sharp gusts of wind intertwined with crackling bolts of lightning creating a dazzling display that forced Tsuki and Shisu to evade skillfully. Shisu, however, danced effortlessly through the onslaught, showcasing his mastery over the same elements. Tsuki retaliated with a barrage of fire-style jutsu, flames dancing around her like a blazing tempest. Naruto, seeing an opportunity, merged his wind chakra with the fiery inferno, creating a vortex of spiraling flames that spiraled towards Shisu. The Uchiha prodigy countered with his own potent fire style, extinguishing Naruto's attack with a colossal blaze, leaving embers dancing in the air. As the battleground crackled with elemental fury, Tsuki leaped into action. Employing wind style, she created a tempest that blurred the lines between offense and defense. Naruto and Shisu found themselves caught in a windstorm, struggling to maintain their footing. Shisu, however, seized the moment and unleashed a piercing lightning-style jutsu that crackled through the turbulent air. Naruto and Tsuki, briefly immobilized, were forced to adapt swiftly. Their fight descended into a complex dance of chakra and strategy, each anticipating the other's moves. Shisu's movements were fluid. His actions almost prescient as he artfully dodged Naruto's and Tsuki's combined assault. His taunts, cloaked in admiration, echoed through the battlefield. You both have potential, but you're still a long way from catching me. Shisu teased, weaving through their attacks effortlessly. Yet, Naruto and Tsuki weren't deterred. Their synchronization grew stronger as they adjusted their tactics on the fly. Tsuki unleashed a barrage of shurikens charged with wind chakra creating a razor-sharp barrage that forced Shisu on the defensive. Naruto seized the opening, diving in with a rapid succession of Teijutsu strikes. Shisu, acknowledging their prowess, activated his main Jekaiyo Sharingan, the battlefield warping as a powerful Jinjutsu took hold. 
Caught within Shisu's illusion, Naruto and Suki stumbled. Temporarily disoriented, Shisu seized the opportunity to summon a colossal fire-style attack, engulfing both in searing flames. The intensity of the jutsu forced them to the ground, momentarily defeated. As the battle concluded, Shisu stood victorious, a knowing smile playing on his lips. The trio, breathing heavily, shared a moment of camaraderie amidst the embers and whirlwinds. Shisu's words, though challenging, carried a sense of encouragement. You've got potential, both of you. Keep refining your skills, and one day, you might surpass even me. Naruto and Tsuki, while aware of their limitations, embrace the journey ahead. The morning sun bore witness to their commitment to grow stronger, one fiery tempest and gust of wind at a time. The Hokage office was filled with an air of anticipation as Team 7, accompanied by Team 11, gathered for their mission briefing. Kakashi, with his typical nonchalance, arrived fashionably late, earning an exasperated sigh from Sakura and an amused glance from Sasuke. Minato, observing the dynamics, couldn't help but find solace in the familiar banter. As the team settled, Minato rose from his seat, announcing the mission details. The room hushed, and a sense of gravity enveloped the young ninja. This was to be their first joint C-rank mission, an escort task to the Land of Waves. Tension lingered, and the teams exchanged wary glances, anticipating the challenges ahead. Minato called forth the bridge builder, Tazuna, a grizzled man with a distinct scent of alcohol wafting through the room. He eyed Team Eleven with a dubious gaze, sparing a more favorable assessment for Sasuke, who seemed to earn a small nod of approval. The air grew thick with unspoken hostility when Tazuna, unfiltered as ever, referred to Team Eleven as a bunch of brats, minus the one with black hair. Mito bristled, Menma rolled his eyes, and Kushina's grip on her kunai tightened dangerously. The Uchiha siblings were ready to teach Tazuna a lesson, but Minato intervened with a calming gesture. Sasuke, ever the observer, engaged in casual conversation with Sakura, recognizing her as the more composed member of Team 7. Meanwhile, Naruto's eyes sparkled with a hidden determination, subtly noticed by Minato, who couldn't help but feel a surge of pride. Easy there. Tazuna-san, Minato interjected with a placating smile. These brats are our future. Team 11, led by the talented Kushina here, and Team 7, with Kakashi as their sensei Kushina, with her fiery spirit, shot a fierce look at Tazuna. They might be young, but don't underestimate them. They are the hope of this village Naruto, unfazed by the derogatory comments, exchanged a knowing glance with Sasuke. Their silent communication spoke volumes about the unity forming among Team 7 and 11. Meanwhile, Kakashi, seemingly lost in his book, occasionally cast a watchful eye over his students. Minato continued the briefing, emphasizing the significance of the mission. He believed in these young ninjas, understanding the potential they held. Tazuna, though stubborn, couldn't deny the seriousness in their eyes. As the tension eased, and the mission details were finalized, the teams departed for their task. Team 7, Team 11, and Tazuna, the mismatched ensemble, now had a common goal. Escort the bridge builder and ensure the success of this crucial mission the quiet moments before embarking on their mission to the land of waves. The genin gathered outside the Hockage Tower, each having prepared at home for the journey ahead. As the teams assembled, Naruto, standing with just a small scroll in hand, caught the attention of Kakashi, who, with a tilt of his head, questioned the absence of a traditional backpack. Hey, Naruto, where's all your stuff? Kakashi asked. His one visible eye focused on the seemingly unburdened genin. A confident grin played on Naruto's face as he casually responded. Storage scrolls. Sensei, I've got everything I need right here. Swiftly, he unfurled the scroll, revealing a compact arrangement of weapons, supplies, and clothing. A testament to his adeptness in sealing techniques. As Naruto confidently unveiled his storage scroll, showcasing his proficiency in sealing techniques, Kushina observed the scene with a mix of pride and curiosity. On the sidelines, Mito and Menma, instead of admiring Naruto's ingenuity, couldn't hide the simmering jealousy that bubbled within them. To them, it wasn't a moment of appreciation but a subtle jab, and in the recesses of their minds, they belittled Naruto for a skill they hadn't yet mastered despite their longer exposure to the world of sealing. The siblings, consumed by their own competitive nature, resolved to bridge the perceived gap and prove their worth on this mission. 
Kushina's gaze lingered on Naruto, and for a fleeting moment, she glimpsed echoes of Minato in him. Kushina's eyes welled with unspoken emotions as she gazed at Naruto. In that poignant moment, she questioned who he truly was, a question that resonated with the years of neglect and misunderstanding. The stark difference between the Naruto she now saw and the one she had unwittingly depicted in her own mind left her grappling with a profound sense of guilt. As she waited for the other genin to arrive, a storm of conflicting emotions churned within Kushina, urging her to unravel the mystery of the sun she had. For too long, misunderstood and overlooked, as the teams assembled for the mission, Sakura, Sasuke, and Tsuki joined Naruto at the meeting point. The air was charged with a mix of determination and apprehension. Tazuna, situated in the middle, felt the gravity of being escorted by a group of young ninjas. The teams, led by their Jonin senses Kakashi and Kushina, set out from the village gates, ready for the challenges that awaited them. The formation was tight and strategic. Menmo and Mito, the vigilant sense ninjas, took the rear positions, their keen senses actively scanning the surroundings for potential threats. Naruto and Tsuki flanked Tazuna on each side, their watchful eyes ever alert. Meanwhile, Sakura and Sasuke held the outer perimeter, forming an impenetrable defensive shield. Naruto and Tsuki, though positioned on opposite sides, exchanged glances filled with shared determination. The unspoken connection between them spoke volumes, a silent understanding of the mission's importance. Their desire to stand side by side was momentarily eclipsed by the necessity to maintain focus and vigilance on the task at hand. The journey through the land of waves had just begun, and Team 7 and Team 11 were poised for the challenges that lay ahead. The peaceful atmosphere was shattered as the two demon brothers emerged, launching a surprise attack on the ninja escort teams. The excitement sparked in Menmo and Mito's eyes, eager for a chance to showcase their skills in battle. However, before anyone could react, Naruto and Tsuki, positioned as the wings of the formation, swiftly sprang into action. With a yellow and black flash, Naruto executed a flawless body flicker technique, teleporting to a kune he had strategically thrown earlier. What seemed like a missed throw turned into a masterful plan as Naruto slammed a Rasengan into the back of one of the demon brothers. The enemy crumpled under the unexpected assault, neutralized within mere seconds. Simultaneously, Tsuki, utilizing her Sharingan, danced through the air to avoid a poisoned blade aimed at her. In a breathtaking display of Uchiha prowess, she unleashed a majestic destroyer flame that engulfed the second demon brother, leaving him teetering on the brink of death. The speed and precision with which Naruto and Tsuki dispatched the threats left Menma, Mito, and even Kushina astonished. Their confusion mirrored in their expressions, but what baffled them even more was the revelation that Naruto had effortlessly used the Flying Thunder God technique and successfully executed a Rasengan. The siblings bombarded Naruto with a barrage of questions, wondering how he had mastered such advanced techniques. Naruto, sporting a bored and emotionless face, skillfully deflected their inquiries of the Flying Thunder God by saying it was an extremely advanced body flicker he learned from a good friend and the Rasengan was something he figured out after seeing Menma try attacking him with it once. Meanwhile, Kakashi, Sasuke, and Sakura, familiar with the true potential of their teammates, weren't surprised by the display. Kakashi, in his usual manner, clapped with approval, his lone eye scrutinizing Tazuna, raising unspoken questions about the true nature of the mission. Tazuna's weathered face bore the weight of a sorrowful tale as he began recounting the struggles that plagued the land of waves. The tyrant Gato, a merciless ruler, had tightened his grip on the region, ensuring a stranglehold on its economy. He exploited the people, forcing them into dire poverty while reserving the spoils for himself. The once thriving land was now reduced to a shadow of its former self. The air grew heavy with emotion as Tazuna spoke of the harsh reality the people faced children with empty stomachs and a pervasive desperation that hung in the air. Gato's merciless rule had cast a dark cloud over the land of waves, with the impoverished citizens grappling with the harsh consequences of his tyranny. Tazuna, the master bridge builder, saw hope in constructing a bridge that could change their fate. This bridge promised a chance to break free from the chains of poverty, offering the people an opportunity for trade with other nations and the prosperity they so desperately needed. However, this noble endeavor came at a steep cost. As the tale unfolded, 
Tazuna revealed that Gato, upon discovering the potential prosperity the bridge could bring, had placed a bounty on the master builder's head. Mercenary Shinobi, lured by the promise of a reward, now hunted Tazuna relentlessly. The gravity of the situation settled over Team 7 and Team 11, intertwining their fates with the plight of the Land of Waves. Tazuna's story painted a heartbreaking picture of a land ravaged by poverty, where the innocence of children was sacrificed at the altar of Gato's greed. The mission to protect Tazuna and complete the bridge took on a profound meaning as they ventured forth into a struggle against oppression and a quest for a brighter future for the Land of Waves. Apologies for the confusion. On the path to the Land of Waves, Kakashi and Kushina found themselves at a crossroads regarding the continuation of the mission. As they walked, the conversation took a serious turn. Kakashi, confident in his team's capabilities, expressed his genuine desire to help the people of the Land of Waves. He saw this mission as an opportunity for his genin to prove their skills and make a meaningful impact. Meanwhile, Kushina, concerned about the potential dangers ahead, hesitated to expose the young team to a mission that could involve powerful adversaries. The path ahead diverged, both metaphorically and literally, and the decision weighed heavily on Kushina. Kakashi, understanding her concerns, gave her the choice to withdraw from the mission if she deemed it too perilous for their young genin. The air became charged with uncertainty as they faced the dilemma together. After a thoughtful pause, Kushina, appreciating Kakashi's understanding, contemplated the risks and benefits, the fate of the mission, the potential encounters with formidable shinobi, and the safety of her team all factored into her decision. Eventually, acknowledging the determination of both teams, Kakashi and Kushina arrived at a collective decision to press forward. The path continued, winding through the landscapes of uncertainty and possibility. The thick mist enveloped Team 7 and Team 11 as they approached the Land of Waves. A palpable tension settled in the air, and the sudden realization struck them. All was not as it seemed. The mist became an ominous shroud, obscuring their surroundings, and a shared sense of unease gripped the team. Naruto, with his keen instincts, detected a presence within the mist. Reacting swiftly, he called upon his mastery of wind release, summoning a powerful gust that tore through the fog. As the mist dispersed, revealing the figures within, a masked shinobi stood beside the infamous Zabuza, the demon of the mist. The team snapped into defensive formation. Kakashi and Kushina taking the forefront as they face these formidable adversaries. Zabuza, known as an s rank shinobi, wasted no time issuing a demand for Tazuna. His threats echoed through the mist, creating an atmosphere fraught with danger. In response, Kakashi activated his Sharingan, the red glint mirroring the intensity of the situation. He swiftly assigned roles, instructing Kushina to handle the masked shinobi while he took on Zabuza. The young genin were charged with protecting Tazuna, their lives hanging in the balance. Stay alert to stay alive. Kakashi's words reverberated in the mist, a stark reminder of the perilous nature of their mission. The battle erupted with a clash of kunai, jutsu, and strategic maneuvers as Team 7 and Team 11 faced off against the menacing duo. In the midst of the chaos, dialogue flowed, an exchange of threats, warnings, and glimpses into the combatants' motives. The land of waves, once a promising destination, now hosted a fierce confrontation that would test the mettle of the young ninja. The battleground was painted with the fiery hues of battle, ice mirrors reflecting the chaos as Kushina's expert swordplay clashed with the masked adversary's cunning maneuvers. The relentless regeneration of the ice mirrors proved to be an insurmountable challenge, leaving Kushina at a disadvantage. She gritted her teeth her strikes becoming more desperate as the mysterious figure toyed with her. Across the field, Kakashi, the seasoned veteran, exchanged blows with Zabuza, their movement so fast they left after images in the mist. Kakashi's Sharingan glowed, analyzing Zabuza's movements, but the battle took a dire turn when the masked figure intervened. Kakashi found himself in a perilous situation, juggling attacks from two formidable opponents. Amidst the chaos, Naruto's kunai cut through the air, a small glimmer of hope for the beleaguered Team 7. Naruto, flanked by two clones armed with swirling Rasengans, created a distraction that proved vital for the ensuing strategy. With a shared glance, Tsuki and Sasuke unleashed their combined fireball jutsu, the flames roaring and intertwining with a powerful wind vortex, amplifying the intensity. Naruto's voice cut through the din, commanding the winds to dance with the fire. Tsuki, Sasuke, 
Synchronize your jutsu. Let the wind amplify the fire's fury the siblings. Fueled by Naruto's strategic guidance. Poured chakra into their techniques. Creating a maelstrom of destructive force. The masked shinobi, agile and elusive, darted through the chaos, avoiding the worst of the attack. However, Naruto had woven a subtle lightning jutsu into the mix. Now, Sasuke, Tsuki, unleash the lightning Naruto's command rang out, and the concealed lightning jutsu activated, casting a web of paralysis that ensnared Zabuza. The misty battlefield crackled with energy. As the aftermath unfolded, Naruto surveyed the scene his eyes flickering with a mixture of satisfaction and determination. That should give us an opening. Kakashi Sensei, we've got an advantage now the masked figure, although swift, had momentarily lost the upper hand, caught off guard by the unexpected synergy of Team 7's coordinated assault. The air hung heavy with tension as Zabuza, paralyzed but not defeated, and the masked ally, unfazed but momentarily disrupted, assessed the changed dynamics of the battle. The battlefield, once dominated by the overwhelming might of the rogue shinobi, now bore the marks of Team 7's resilience and strategic prowess. The misty battlefield fell silent, the tension palpable as Zabuza's call echoed through the air, revealing the masked shinobi's true identity as Haku. Naruto, standing firm before his sensei, felt the weight of the impending battle settle upon his shoulders. With a determined gaze, he addressed Kakashi, rest up. Sensei, I'll handle this, as Kakashi, weary from the strain of maintaining his Sharingan, nodded gratefully, Naruto turned his attention to the formidable duo before him, Haku, exuding an aura of icy determination, met Naruto's gaze with unwavering resolve, the air crackled with anticipation as the two adversaries prepared to clash, as Naruto stepped forward to face Haku, Kakashi couldn't help but feel a surge of pride and nostalgia wash over him. Observing Naruto's unwavering resolve and determination, Kakashi couldn't shake the feeling that he was witnessing a glimpse of his former sensei, Minato Namakes, in the young shinobi before him. Despite his initial reservations, Kakashi couldn't deny the resemblance between Naruto's demeanor and the legendary fourth Hokage's unwavering spirit. With a silent nod to himself, Kakashi made the decision to entrust Naruto with the battle ahead, acknowledging the young shinobi's innate strength and potential. Though reluctant to let go of the reins, Kakashi knew that Naruto possessed the same indomitable spirit that had once inspired him and his comrades during their days as teammates. With a sense of quiet determination, Kakashi silently offered his support to Naruto as he prepared to face his opponent head-on. Kushina, now under the care of Mito and Menma, watched with a mixture of concern and admiration as her son faced off against the powerful enemy. Sakura, her hands trembling with nerves, began administering first aid, her healing jutsu providing a semblance of relief amidst the chaos. The Uchiha siblings, feeling the weight of their limitations, could only watch helplessly as Naruto stepped forward to confront Haku. Mito's fists clenched in frustration, her desire to aid her brother burning fiercely within her. Menma, his expression grim, silently urged Naruto on with a supportive nod. Naruto's heart pounded with adrenaline as he locked eyes with Haku, each moment stretching into an eternity of anticipation. The mist hung heavy around them, obscuring their surroundings and heightening the sense of tension that permeated the battlefield. With a sudden surge of determination, Naruto lunged forward, his movement swift and decisive. Let's settle this, Haku, he declared, his voice ringing out with unwavering confidence. The clash of wills echoed through the mist, as Naruto and Haku prepared to engage in a battle that would test their strength, resolve, and bonds. As Haku's senban sliced through the air with deadly precision, Naruto danced gracefully amidst the flurry of attacks, his movements fluid and precise. With each step, he seemed to embody the very essence of the elements, his chakra swirling with another worldly energy. As their clash escalated, Naruto's fiery determination clashed against Haku's icy resolve, creating a mesmerizing spectacle of light and shadow. Amidst the chaos of battle, Naruto's voice cut through the tension like a beacon of reason. Violence only begets more violence, he declared, his words echoing across the battlefield. There's always a better way, a path to understanding and compromise. Haku, though surprised by Naruto's words, remained steadfast in his resolve. You speak of peace, he replied, 
His voice tinged with both curiosity and skepticism. But in a world ruled by conflict, is such a dream even attainable? Naruto met Haku's gaze with unwavering determination. It may seem impossible, but I believe that where there's a will, there's a way. He retorted, his voice brimming with conviction. We may be on opposite sides of this battlefield, but deep down, we both share the same desire for a better future. As their conversation continued, Naruto's fiery aura began to intensify, his chakra surging with newfound strength. With a determined focus, he channeled his elemental mastery, transforming into a living inferno that consumed the icy shackles that bound him. In that moment, he became like a Logia Devil Fruit user, a concept from the anime One Piece, where individuals gain the ability to transform into a specific element and control it with unparalleled mastery. With each movement, Naruto's flames danced with a fierce vitality, overwhelming Haku's ice-based techniques with raw power. As their clash reached its climax, Naruto's voice rang out once more, echoing across the battlefield with unwavering resolve. Even in the midst of conflict, the flames of hope can never be extinguished, he declared, his words resonating with a profound sense of truth. Despite the chaos that surrounded them, Naruto and Haku continued their battle, their movements a symphony of light and shadow, fire and ice. In that moment, amidst the clash of titans, a flicker of understanding bloomed between them, a silent acknowledgement of the shared dream that burned within their hearts. As the clash between Naruto and Haku reached its zenith, they both paused, their eyes locking in a silent exchange of determination. With a shared understanding, they abandoned their elemental techniques, opting instead for a pure display of Teijutsu prowess. With lightning-fast reflexes, Haku lunged forward, his movements graceful yet deadly. Naruto met his advance head-on, his own strikes a testament to years of rigorous training. Their movements blurred with blinding speed as they danced around each other, each anticipating the other's next move with uncanny precision. Haku's strikes were swift and precise, his fists and feet moving like a whirlwind of steel. Naruto countered with equal ferocity, his punches and kicks delivering a relentless barrage of blows. Each movement was calculated, each strike aimed with pinpoint accuracy. As the battle raged on, their movements became a blur of motion, each exchange a symphony of martial prowess. Haku's fluid movements were matched only by Naruto's unyielding resolve, their clash echoing across the battlefield with a fierce intensity. With each strike, Naruto and Haku pushed themselves to their limits, their bodies moving in perfect harmony. Their fists collided with explosive force, sending shockwaves rippling through the air. Each blow was met with unwavering determination, each movement a testament to their unyielding spirit. For a full minute, they continued their fierce duel, each refusing to back down. Their movements were a testament to their skill and determination, a display of raw power and unwavering resolve. As the dust settled, Naruto and Haku stood locked in a silent standoff, their breaths labored but their spirits unbroken. Moments later, as Zabuza appeared behind Naruto, his executioner's blade gleaming ominously in the sunlight, a collective gasp escaped the lips of the onlookers. Despite the lingering effects of the paralysis, Zabuza moved with deadly precision, his blade poised to strike. Naruto's instincts kicked into overdrive as he sensed the impending danger. With lightning-fast reflexes, he spun around, narrowly evading Zabuza's lethal blow. The air crackled with tension as Naruto landed gracefully, his eyes narrowed in determination. Zabuza's expression twisted into a feral snarl as he launched another relentless assault, his blade slicing through the air with terrifying speed. Naruto danced around his opponent, his movements fluid and precise as he deftly dodged each incoming strike. The clang of metal echoed through the battlefield as Naruto and Zabuza engaged in a deadly dance of blades. Each clash sent shockwaves rippling through the air, the sheer force of their attacks threatening to shatter the ground beneath them. Despite Zabuza's ferocity, Naruto refused to yield, his resolve unshakable. With each passing moment, he grew more determined, his movements becoming more fluid and controlled. As Zabuza pressed his advantage, Naruto's determination only burned brighter. In a swift motion, Naruto countered Zabuza's onslaught, his own blade meeting the executioner's blade with a resounding clash. The two warriors locked eyes, their gazes burning with unspoken determination as they fought tooth and nail for victory. As Haku and Zabuza coordinated their attacks with deadly precision, Naruto found himself besieged from all sides. 
their movements were seamless, a testament to their years of partnership and shared experience. Haku's senban flew like a storm of needles, aimed with unerring accuracy at Naruto's vital points, while Zabuza's executioner's blade cleaved through the air with brutal efficiency. Together, they formed an unstoppable force, their attacks converging on Naruto like a relentless tempest. With each strike, Naruto's instinct screamed at him to move, to evade, to survive. Channeling his mastery over the flying Raijin technique, he danced through the battlefield with unparalleled agility, leaving behind only flashes of yellow and black in his wake. The choreography of the battle was a dizzying spectacle of speed and precision. Naruto's movements were a blur as he teleported from one point to another, narrowly avoiding the deadly onslaught of his adversaries. Haku and Zabuza pressed their advantage, their attacks relentless and unforgiving, but Naruto was not one to be easily overwhelmed. With each dodge, each evasion, he analyzed his opponent's movements, searching for any opening, any weakness to exploit. His mind raced, calculating his next move with razor-sharp focus. In a sudden burst of speed, Naruto launched a counter-attack, his Rasengan crackling with raw energy as he closed the distance between himself and his adversaries. With a ferocious battle cry, he unleashed his attack, the swelling vortex of chakra tearing through the air with devastating force. The impact sent shockwaves rippling through the battlefield, scattering debris in all directions. For a moment, the air hung heavy with tension as the dust settled, revealing Naruto standing tall amidst the aftermath of his attack. But Haku and Zabuza were not so easily defeated. With a fierce determination burning in their eyes, they regrouped, ready to continue their assault. The battle was far from over, and Naruto knew that he would need to dig deep if he hoped to emerge victorious. As the battle reached its climax, Naruto's resolve hardened, and he summoned two clones to aid him in turning the tide of the fight. With their combined efforts, they launched a relentless assault on Zabuza and Haku, their attacks coming from all directions with blinding speed and precision. But Naruto's true strength lay in his ability to transform his body into the very elements themselves. As Zabuza's executioner's blade and Haku's senban bore down on him, Naruto shifted seamlessly between water, wind, fire, lightning, and even sand, each element flowing around him like a protective shield. With each attack that should have struck true, Naruto simply dissolved into the elements, leaving his adversaries bewildered and frustrated. In a decisive moment, Naruto's Rasengan found its mark, slamming into Zabuza with bone-crushing force and sending him hurtling through the air, incapacitated for the remainder of the battle. With their leader defeated, Haku realized the futility of continuing the fight and made a strategic retreat, dragging Zabuza along with him. But Mito and Menma, fueled by their desire for vengeance for what Haku had done to their mother, charged forward with Rasengan in hand, intent on finishing off Haku once and for all. However, Naruto's cold warning stopped them dead in their tracks, freezing them in place with its chilling intensity. It was a stark reminder that Naruto was not to be trifled with, his words carrying the weight of authority and power. Haku, acknowledging Naruto's strength and resolve, nodded in gratitude before retreating with Zabuza. Naruto's siblings reluctantly obeyed his command to fall back, their hearts heavy with the knowledge that they had been outmatched by their older brother. Meanwhile, Kushina, who had awoken to witness the fierce battle, watched with a mixture of awe and concern as Naruto displayed his incredible prowess on the battlefield. It was a stark reminder of just how much her son had grown, and she couldn't help but feel a surge of confusion and guilt for not knowing her own son mixed with a tinge of worry for the trials that lay ahead, as Tazuna extended his hospitality, offering to take them to his nearby home. The weary group gratefully accepted, their exhaustion evident from the battles they had faced. Upon arrival, they were greeted by Tsunami and her son Inari. Hope you all enjoyed it. Please take care, stay safe. This was the King of Weebs, and I'll see you guys on the next part or the next time I upload. I will upload soon.